Just like we recreated debtors control during the budgeting process, we also might need to recreate stock and creditors control ledgers. So we might need to do that because it helps us budget for a certain figure. So for example, we're budgeting for January and we know that at the start of the month we've got stock of 10,000, cost of sales during January are expected to be 12,000, we think there'll be stock losses of 500, the owner will take out some drawings of stock for 800, and the firm thinks that at the end of the month there will be stock of $9,000. Well, one thing we don't know there is uh, when we're budgeting, how much stock do we think we'll buy during January 2015? So to answer that question, we're going to recreate stock control one item at a time. So we know at the start of the period we actually have $10,000 of stock, so the opening balance would be a debit for $10,000. We know that we're going to, or we budget to sell $12,000 of stock, so that would be a credit which would go in there. We budget for stock losses of $500, so that will lower stock control with a credit. We, the owner is planning on taking drawings of stock, which costs $800, so that would be a credit. And we know that going forward, the firm budgets to have $9,000 of stock uh, at the end of the period. So we know that at some point we're going to total uh, this ledger and then we balance it by figuring out the difference and carrying it down like so. What we don't know though is how much stock will we buy. So for example, we don't know this number here, X, how much stock will we buy. Uh, during January 2015. So to do that, we need to solve for X. And the first thing we do is we need to total up the sides. Which side is, uh, can we add up? So we can either add up this one, the debit side, or the credit side. Now we obviously can't add up the debits here because we have an X. But what we can do is add up all of those credits. And if we add up all of those numbers, we know that's going to be uh, 22,300. We put that on the other side and we know that going forward that's how we got the balance of $9,000 into next period. So what we can do now is solve for X by taking 22300 and subtracting away the 10000 and that will tell us that we are expecting to buy stock of $12,300. Uh, to do this, it's really important we know all the things that could go in stock control and that way we can budget uh, effectively. So we know that stock control will go up when we buy stock. We know it will go up when there's a stock gain. Uh, the owner contributes stock personally as a capital contribution or there's a sales return from a customer. Stock control will go down when we sell it, when there's a stock loss, when the owner takes it for personal drawings when it's donated for advertising purposes and if there's a purchase return and the one we sometimes forget is that when we write down stock to its net realizable value a stock write down will lower the stock control ledger so any of these numbers could be x so we just always want to make sure that we know every single number that could go in as a debit or a credit to stock control Likewise, we might need to recreate creditors control. So for example, on the 1st of January, uh, the business has creditors of $6,000. And during its budget, they think there'll be stock purchases of $10,000 plus GST during January. Uh, but discount revenue is budgeted to be $300, including GST, for promptly paying back some of our creditors. We think we'll return $700, including GST, to our creditors. And going forward, we expect our creditors balance to be $4,000. So based on that, what is the estimated payments to creditors for January? So doing our budget, we're going to want that number. And to do that, we're just going to recreate the creditors control ledger again. So we'll start with the opening balance on the 1st of January, which would be a credit because a creditors control is a liability. Stock purchased on credit plus GST would make creditors control go up. So that would be a credit. We've also got discount revenue for prompt payments, so that'll make our creditors control go down with a debit. We've got purchase returns, so we're going to return some of our stock to our creditors. That'll decrease creditors with a debit. And then we know going forward that the amount owned to creditors will be $4,000. So that would look like a uh, last day of the period we have a debit of $4,000. And we carry that down as a credit for $4,000 on the first day of next period. So now we can figure out what is the estimated payments to creditors and what we'll do is we'll say that number it must be here and that'll be the bank number and that'll be X. So to solve for X we need to add up one of the sides and put it in as the total. Now obviously we can't add up this side because it has X's in it. So what we can do though is add up 
this, uh, these two numbers here. And that number must be the overall total number credits for the period. And then that'll go over as a debit. And now we can solve for x by subtracting that away. So we've got 17,000 as the total number of debits there, less the balance of four, the stock uh, uh, slash GST for the sale purchase return of 700, discount revenue of 300, that would be a total of $12,000. So in our budget, we will put cash, flow, uh, cash payments to creditors of $12,000 for the month. Now, it's very important that to be able to do the budget, we know everything that could go on creditors' control. So creditors will go up when we buy stock for, uh, from suppliers on credit and we get charged GST. It'll go down when we make payments to creditors, when we get a discount, so discount revenue, when we return purchases to them, uh, plus the GST. Any of these numbers could be X, and it's important that you know each one, and then that way you'll always be able to recreate the creditors' control ledger.